My name is Nicole with So Much More. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make a reusable grocery tote. While you're watching, if you see something that you like, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started making your reusable grocery tote. Download your fabric requirements and cutting measurements on my website. I've linked those in the description of this video. Following your cutting measurements, cut your tote straps and tote body and then trim those to size. Take your straps to the ironing board and press out any wrinkles. Next, fold your straps in half lengthwise. Open this back up and then take each long side and fold towards the middle. Turn and press each short end at a one quarter inch. Do this on both sides and then fold in both long sides and clip at the ends to secure. Sew each strap closed, being sure that you backstitch at the beginning and at the end. Now that we have our straps done, we can set those aside and work on the body of the tote bag. Give it a nice pressing and then take each end and pin or clip it together. We're going to use a 1 half inch seam allowance and the easiest way to do this is to use a magnetic seam guide. Sew both ends together, leaving the top open. Press the seams open and then with your seam guide, fold the top edge down by one inch and press and then clip. Fold a second time so that your raw edge is enclosed. Remember to measure this second fold at the same one inch mark. Press and then clip and we'll sew this down. Remove your magnetic seam guide and sew the top edge just one eighth of an inch away from the bottom fold. Now it's time to add the straps. Our tote body is still inside out. Reference your cutting measurements to determine the placement of your straps. Align the bottom of the strap with the bottom fold and clip in place. Be careful that your strap is not twisted. Let's take this to the sewing machine and sew a boxed pattern to help secure each strap. Sewing a boxed pattern is easy. First, you'll begin by backstitching and then sew a square. Once you reach the corner of your origin, then you'll make a diagonal stitching to the opposite corner. Stitch your way to the next side and make another diagonal stitch. Be sure to backstitch when you're finished. Do this boxed pattern stitch for each strap end. Turn your bag right side out and set it aside. Now we're going to add a fun design to the front of our new tote. I've added some cute designs to my online shop. You can download those and import it into your cutting system. I'm going to use iron-on vinyl and my Cricut Maker. Once I have my artwork imported, I'll go through the motions of welding items so they don't end up in random places on my cutting mat. When it comes time to cutting, 
I like to make the most of my vinyl sheets. I often move images to a single piece of vinyl if possible. I found this has saved me lots of time and money. Since we have text on this particular design, it's super important that you select the mirror option. You should also select that option on all of the mats because they'll interact and fit into each other for this particular design. Once you have the images how you like them on your mat, you'll select the Everyday Iron on Material option, and I always set the pressure to More. Now that all the vinyl has been cut, it's time to do a little weeding. I like to use my Daylight Company Wafer One light box whenever I weed my vinyl. The light box helps me see exactly where I need to begin weeding. After I've weeded all of the vinyl, I'm going to cut apart this first piece because there's several layers that need to be positioned on the project. Back on my wool pressing mat, I'll use my hot iron to transfer the vinyl onto my tote. Sometimes I use a Teflon sheet to help protect the exposed vinyl from my iron. This design has three layers of vinyl, and now that I have my base layer in place, I can add the ocean and the land, which is part of the globe design. There's also a couple of fill-in spots for the arrows that circle the globe, and those are those little blue dots that I cut just before the earth pieces. Adding the second and third layers is quite simple. You just need to take your time and align everything. It's kind of like working on a puzzle. The last pieces are the blue arrows that circle the globe. I'm attaching those one at a time. And then I'll go ahead and use my Teflon sheet to press everything one more time, just for good measure. I hope you have fun making these simple grocery bag totes. You can find a link for the sewing instructions in the description of this video. I've also linked the two designs that you can add to your totes. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button and share this video with your sewing friends. If you're looking for more sewing and quilting DIY, check out the link in the description and sign up for my weekly newsletter. Each week I send inspiration directly to your inbox. For unique sewing and quilting projects, visit my website where there is always so much more in store.